What is going on guys? Welcome back to Python tips and tricks tutorial series. In today's video, we're going to talk about the zip function. So let us get right into it. Now the zip function in Python is a very simple one. It's easy to understand. And the main purpose of it is to combine iterables or connections into tuples or uh, into collections of individual values from each collection, so to say. Now let's make an example here. Well, let's do an example here. We have two lists. The first one is names and names contains a bunch of names, obviously, Anna, John, Bob, Mike, and I don't know, Julie or something, July, I don't know. Um, then we have ages, and we're going to say the ages are 17, 22, 88, 34, and I don't know, 53. So these are the names and the ages, but as you can see, these are not connected. So we have a separate list of names and a separate list of ages. We don't have the age 17, for example, bound to the name Anna. We just have the name Anna in one list and the age 17 in another list. And uh, this is also not a dictionary, so we don't have any connection, so to say. Um, but sometimes we're going to have or we're going to want to iterate over both collections at once. So we can say in our hat, even though in the script it's not the case, in our hat those are connected. So we can say Anna is 17 years old, uh, John is 22 years old and so on. Uh, we want to connect them. Uh, we, we want them to be connected. So we want to iterate over both of them at the same time. So we want to iterate over a tuple of name and age uh, from both lists. So what we can do here in a um, in a simple way without using the zip function is we could just go ahead and say uh, for i in range, and then we say length of names, for example, we're going to say print, we're going to use an f string here, we're going to say name is uh, names and the current index. And then we're going to say, come on, h is ages and the current index. So we're using the same number, we're using one integer, uh, and we're using the index on both lists. So we say that the name or the h in the the h at the index zero belongs to the name at the index, uh, index zero and so on. So this is one way to do it. And when we run this, you'll see that we get the results that we need here. We get uh, Anna, actually, let me clear that because we have some output from the previous things I did here. So we have name Anna age 17, name John age 22, and so on. This is one way to do it. But it's, n I would say it's not the most clean way to do it, because you need to work with range uh, and length and with indices here. Uh, a much simpler way in Python is to just use the zip object. So what we do is we say for name and age, you can call these two whatever you want, you can call them x and y as well, for name and age in, and now we're saying in zip. Oh, sorry, in zip, and then we're passing the names and ages. So the zip function, what it does is actually, let's before we we, we do the loop, let's just say, um, print zip names and ages and convert that into a list so that we see what's in there. Because if you just zip them, they're a zip object, but by converting them into a list, um, you can see the content as well. So what you can see what the zip function does is it creates a list of tuples and a tuple is always a name and an age. So the name at the index zero and the age of the index zero are one pair, one tuple. And uh, this is what we end up with when we use the zip function. So by saying for name and age in zip names and ages, <clears throat> what we get is we actually get one name and the according or the age at the same index in the other list as a pair. So we can say f string name is name and the h is the h. So actually, we don't need to type commands, we just click here. And as you can see, the result is the same by using the zip function. So we don't have to, to do it with the same index, we don't have to do this manual way of figuring out how long the lists are and so on. We can just use the zip function and it combines the two or actually not only two, we can we can uh, go up to n different collections here, we can also combine name ages, uh, names, ages, weights, and so on, uh, into one tuple, or triple or just a collection of these values uh, combined. 
Now let me show you a quick example of why this is useful. Where can we use this? Let's say we have a list of sales and the sales is not, uh, the sales are not stated in terms of amount of sales, but actual revenue from the sales. So let's say we have $500 in one day, then we have $800 in another day, $300, $1,200 and $600. So these are five days. And then we also have uh, some costs and these costs are 200 at one day, uh, then 600 at another day, then we have 200 again, then we have something like 100 and here we have 800 or something. And now what we want to do is we want to get the profits here. Now the profits um, are essentially sales minus costs, right? So we want to go ahead and say, um, print the profit, oh, sorry, the profit for a certain day is whatever. Um, now one way to do this is of course, uh, to do the way that I showed you in the beginning with the uh, with the index, we just say day one, uh, or we started index I equals zero and say day one is this uh, sales zero minus cost zero and so on. But we can also use a zip function. So we can go ahead and say sale and cost uh, in for sale and cost in zip sales costs print. And I'm not going to format that much here. I'm just going to say sale minus cost for each day. And by doing that, we'll see the profits for each day. So this is one practical use case of the zip function. Now the zip function can not only be used for zipping, it can also be used for unzipping. So let's say we have a list here of zipped things, we have a list of tuples and we have Mike, he is 50 years old, then we have Bob, he is 20 years old, and then we have Anna. Oh, sorry, tuple. We have Anna, and she's, I don't know, 70 years old. And then, uh, last but not least, we have John again. And John is 35 years old. So these are the values that are zipped. How can we unzip them into two separate lists using the zip function? Now, of course, we can also go ahead again and say, okay, for i equals. Uh, or for i in range length zip, and then we can go ahead and always get the zeroth index of each tuple and the first index of each tuple, and then extract these values and pen them into two separate lists. But it actually uh, is a way simpler using the zip function. So we can just go ahead and say uh, names and ages equals, and then we just use the zip function again, and we use the unzipping operator, which is this uh, star sign here, this this uh, asterisk symbol and we use it and then we just say zip. So that's it. That's how we unzip the list. And we can see that this works by just printing names and by just printing ages. Um, and what you see is let me just sorry, let me just clear the screen here. What you see in the end is you see that we end up actually not with a list but with a uh, I don't want to call it tuple because it's tuple when we have two elements in here. But it's essentially a tuple with more than two elements. It's it's a tuple with uh, with four elements here. Of course, we can also go ahead and typecast that into a list, then we would have lists. So let's just do that list, list. And then there you go, we have two lists with names and ages, by just using one line of code and unzipping this uh, list of tuples here. Now there's actually another use case of the zip function that is very useful because I personally have needed it already in a project. Um, it's not very complicated or sophisticated. It's a very simple use case. You have two lists that are somehow interconnected. Let's say we have letters and these letters are uh, B, C, or actually let's go with B, D, A, C. And then we have a bunch of numbers as well. And the numbers are three, uh, two, four, one, uh, actually, why am I using strings here? Come on, we need integers. So we have do uh, these two lists here. And uh, even though there are two separate lists, we want to consider them connected. So B is three, D is two, A is four, and C is one. Now, uh, this is a very abstract example, but I have had a similar situation in one of my projects where I had two lists that I wanted to keep separate. So I didn't want to combine them into a dictionary or something. I wanted to keep them into two separate lists. Uh, but still, I wanted to um, 
have them connected and I wanted to sort them. So for example, in this case, uh, both lists here on, uh, are unsorted and I can either sort the numbers or the letters. Uh, but the problem is if I go ahead and sort the numbers, uh, the connection is lost because I would then have one, two, three, four, but still B, D, A, C. Also, I cannot just go ahead and sort both lists because then I would have A, B, C, D and one, two, three, four, which is not the right uh, connection again, because we need three to stay at the same position as B, uh, two is D, four is A and one is C. So one way to do it is we can use a zip function. So what we can do is we can just say the data in general is a sorted version of the zip object that we get when we combine letters and numbers. So we can actually go ahead and print that to see what happens then. Sorted, by the way, is uh, a function that gets a sorted collection and by using sorted, we automatically typecast it into a list. That's why we can print it. And what you can see here, it's sorted by letters. So it says A, B, C, D, and the numbers are still the right ones. So we have four to A uh, connected to A, three connected to B, one connected to C and two connected to D. Uh, so the order is still uh, the right one. We can also do it the other way around by saying uh, numbers and letters. Then we would sort by numbers you would get one, two, three, four, and the ladders would be the second index or actually the first index, the second position. So we're going to do the first one here though. And let me just change this here in numbers. And now if we wanna uh, convert them back into a list, uh, into two separate lists, the only thing that we need to do is we need to unzip them again. So we say letters and numbers equals zip star data. Oh. What's that? Come on. Uh, and then we can go ahead and print letters and print numbers. And you're going to see that the letters are sorted and the numbers of course are not sorted, but they are still connected to the right letters. So we have A, B, C, D, and the numbers are in their right position. We can do the same thing as I said uh, with the numbers by changing the order here. Now, last but not least, I'm going to show you how to turn uh, two separate lists into a dictionary because that's also not the, the most simple task in Python. You cannot just go ahead and say dict letters numbers or something like that. Uh, you can also not use any uh, other easy way to just combine two lists into a dictionary uh, unless you use the zip function, of course, then it's very simple. You just go ahead and say my dict or my dictionary equals dict and you cannot just pass it to lists, but you can pass the zip object. So you can say dict zip letters and numbers. And that's everything you need to do in order to turn those two lists into a dictionary and combine them. As you can see, B3, D2, A4 and C1. Of course, again, if we change the positions here, we swap keys and values. So we can say letters and we get it the other way around. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. I personally really like to use the zip function because it's very useful. It's not just fancy coding. It's not just something interesting to use. It's really useful because it uh, provides you a very simple and effective way to uh, deal with lists or collections that are connected but are not actually connected in the code. So um, I personally use it quite often. So this video should help you in your future programming career. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.